All right, so this is the part I got back from the machine shop. Uh, the screws I have are 1032, then 1024, 832, 632, um, 440, and 256. Going this way, we have quarter inch screws, half inch screws, and three quarter inch screws. Uh, these holes that don't have screws in them were originally meant for the the uh, the type and length of the screw uh, that is next to them, but the tap that we had wasn't long enough, so we weren't able to uh, test the one inch screws or the, the longer length screws of these smaller um, screw types. However, it's a good opportunity to test if the screwdriver can figure out if uh, it's in a screw or in a hole that does not have a screw in it. So this is the screwdriver and um, it has an accelerometer mounted on the top. It has a force sensing resistor right up underneath with a, a knob that goes into the force sensing resistor. Uh, it has a, a motor, a coupler for the motor to the, the screwdriver and this is an electromagnet. Uh, this, I can't test it uh, because these are stainless steel uh, screws, so they're not magnetized when I uh, energize the electromagnet. But so in this video, I'm just just going to be moving the screws away from hand, uh, moving the screws away by hand, so they don't interrupt uh, any of the next disassembly process. This right here is the main MATLAB GUI that I've been uh, making. All the coordinates of of the robot are in this list box right here and over here is going to be all the output that I get from from the robot okay so this is the circuitry of the robot uh, this is our Arduino motor shield this is the circuit that the accelerometer uses and this is the circuitry uh, that controls the rest of this uh, this robot over here. So if I hit if I hit start, the ro robot goes and attempts to uh, find the first screw hole. So it's going to do a reverse snake pattern. So sort of like this. Uh, so it goes notices there's no screw, it has a timeout of three seconds, and moves on to the next screw. Come on, get in focus. There we go. So here, the screw is going to be unscrewed until the accelerometer triggers. When that triggers, uh, we can just remove the screw. So there's two ways that the screwdriver can determine it's in a screw. One of the ways is by monitoring the uh, current over the motor, and the second way is also by uh, using that accelerometer. So that way, right there, that acceleration in the Z direction, the accelerometer picked it up, just like it picked up the end of that screw. Um, so the more I've been testing, the more it seems the accelerometer picks it up rather than monitoring the current. But it, it, the current does happen. It might work on this one. You just so the current stalled off the motor, and by monitoring that, I know I'm in a screw. Up. This one's probably going to be the accelerometer. Nope, current. So what's going on over here is I'm keeping track of if a screw was found. Uh, screw found, screw found, screw found and what method was used to find it. So the accelerometer was used to find that one, the motor stalling out was used to find that one, 
Uh, here, no screws were found, so there were no method was used. So here's what's going on with the um, the the accelerometer. So this right here, this LED, is the actual signal from the accelerometer. This uh, switch reset latch switch uh, is controlled by the microcontroller so I toggle it on and off and it latches so when it toggles this LED will come on and it's going to stay on until some activity happens with with the accelerometer and that means um, that means that some acceleration happened so it's still going still doing a good job it's tough to remove those looking through a screen So it's not going to find any screws for a little bit. Um, I'm curious, more curious about what happens with these screws back here. Been having a, a tough time lining them up real nicely. So I haven't had a successful run yet where I've where I have uh, removed all of these screws. I have had successful runs where I've found all the screws, but since I've tried to loosen them, just have not had luck. So one interesting case happens if the screwdriver comes down right here on a hole when it when it tightens it sometimes goes into the hole but the accelerometer has a small delay on it just like the uh, looking at the current over the motor because when the motor switches uh, or when this when the motor switches there's a surge in the motor so the, the current goes up really high and the same thing happens uh, with the acceleration in the Z direction. Uh, there's a initial surge in the Z direction. So if I kept the accelerometer on the entire uh, time. Oh, come on. Yes, I think it's going to work. Come on. Yes. Good. Ah, that situation. Well, well, this shows another feature. It shows an automatic timeout will happen. Uh, this runs for 15 seconds. 15 seconds gives a uh, these types of screw, the the amount of time it needs to uh, unscrew, just about, and then it notices it hasn't done anything, and it, it just moves on. So it's not the greatest thing to happen, but um, I guess it was good to show that feature. Um, at the end of a test, I have this this plot generating, and this keeps track of all of the positions and so if it's a circle it means a screw was found and it X means no screw was found and obviously this one didn't work well but then uh, this number under it means the method that was used to determine uh, when the screw was there or not. So a, a 2 represents the accelerometer and a 1 represents the motor stalling out. And this 3 represents that both the accelerometer and the motor, motor stalling out uh, happened. 3 doesn't usually happen that much. It seems to be a majority of the accelerometer. Uh, and that's what happened on this false positive. It was... It was very close to a hole and then it, it, uh, motor started and the accelerometer caught the screwdriver coming into the hole 
Um, again, not not great, uh, but it could have been worse. It has it. The automatic timeout feature really does help though, um, because if if that wasn't there, it would still be looking at that hole.